Hello and welcome back to An Old Man Watches and today I'm going to be talking about the 1972 science fiction film Silent Running starring Bruce Dern. Uh, and this film is set in the, the distant non-specific future uh, and in this distant non-specific future um, there is no natural di biodiversity remaining on Earth. Uh, now our planet doesn't seem to have become some climate change blasted hellhole. Um, you know, it's described to us as being 75 degrees all the time, or 24 Celsius for those of us on the metric system. Uh, and that no one goes hungry, everyone has a job, but there's no life other than humans on the planet. And most people are, are kind of content enough with this situation, feeling, you know, I guess, that the extinction of non-human life is, a, is, you know, a, a price they're willing to pay uh, for perpetual, comfortable weather uh, and enough to eat. Um, an exception to this rule, however, is our main character, Freeman Lowell, uh, who is not on board at all with this. Uh, he thinks that modern life is insipid and bland and uniform, and he aches to restore real food and real parks to the world. Uh, and um, he's been part of a multi-year scientific mission to generate seed stock for just such a project. Um, this is up in space. They've got a whole bunch of biodomes filled with different types of uh flora and they're trying to cultivate them and he you know has high hopes that they will soon begin the final stage return to earth and plant these seeds uh, instead the project is cancelled and all six of lowell's uh, meticulously tended biodomes including his particularly beloved forest dome are slated for destruction now let's just say that lowell does not handle this news very well uh, and the bulk of the film chronicles his increasingly extreme efforts to save his passion project. Um, so, Silent Running from 1972, from a time when science fiction films generally tried to be a bit more cerebral um, than, uh, than they might tend to be in a sort of post-Star Wars, post-Star Trek the motion picture kind of environment. Um, I don't think they always succeeded in being more cerebral, but uh, um, the idea of sort of doing, yeah, like big budget space you know space invaders star wars type stuff wasn't really something that the uh, the big studios were going near at this time and they tended to go with these more sort of high concept uh kind of films does it work uh, well um it's interesting uh, i don't think it entirely works uh but there's definitely some interesting things to talk about and i think it has some things to recommend it so let's dive in uh so uh, nearly 40 years before Avatar was boring me with its Dances with Wolves in Blue narrative and blighting the entire movie industry uh, with a obscene obsession for 3D, um, this film was you know, also doing the, the whole heavy-handed environmentalist message thing. Or was it? Silent Running is widely identified as an environmentalist film, and it certainly has a specific kind of environmentalist as its main character. But, you know, like downfall has hitler as its main character and it's not like that's a movie that lords the nazis or supports the nazis quite the opposite so is this an environmentalist film i definitely don't think it is unequivocally so uh it's true that lowell makes several impassioned speeches about the importance of plants and the natural rather than artificial world uh but it's also true that the world that he is railing against is in some ways much better than one we have today at least in that world nobody goes hungry after all I'm not sure how that's possible, of course. If there are no plants or animals, where is the food coming from? Yeah, but dodgy science or not, it's the scenario the film presents to us, so it's the scenario that we have to kind of weigh up, you know, is a return to, you know, the natural order worth potentially sacrificing people's lives? Um, that's kind of the, the question the film, I guess, is, is asking. Um... Now, on that subject, and on the subject of, 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 of Lowell's reaction, uh, it's important to say, like, Freeman Lowell is the protagonist of our film. It's his story we see, it's his decisions that drive most of the action. But he is most definitely not the film's hero. Uh, while I do think the, the audience is intended to sympathise with Lowell's desire to see plants restored to the earth, because, you know, like, plants, are, they're good, they've got very positive things that they do for the biosphere in the real world and we like them um so whilst we're intended to sympathize with him uh, his, in, his actions in the film are far too extreme to be considered just or moral uh it's not notable to me that lowell never evidences any real warmth or attachment to another human or really any other animal 
in the course of the movie. Quite the opposite, in fact. He seems to have very little time for his colleagues. He lavishes plenty of love and attention on his plants and, and even his robotic assistants, but he seems to barely tolerate the other people he works with. While he's clearly a man of strong convictions, and there is ultimately something to admire in his commitment to those convictions, whatever the cost to himself, uh, they do lead him to do extreme things, things that are very hard to defend and which certainly, I think, disqualify him from the label hero. Now, is this dichotomy intentional in the script? Uh, or did the filmmakers just not see the contradiction they'd created? I don't know the answer to that one, uh, but I think that the, the fact that there is this amb ambiguity is kind of one of the more interesting things about the film. Um, and if the movie didn't have one very large flaw, I'd probably be like, yeah, you should check out Silent Running. But it does. Uh, it does indeed have one very large flaw. You see, while it has a solid opening act and a strong finale, there's a good 40 minute stretch starting around the halfway point of the film and continuing until pretty much the last five or 10 minutes where pretty much nothing happens. Uh, we just get Lowell tending his plants and tinkering with his robotic assistants, reprogramming him to respond to the specific names he's given them and to play poker with him. Now, I get that the film needs to show the passage of time uh, and to provide some separation between the opening act uh, and its drama and the finale and its drama, uh, but this does seem a rather drawn out and padded way to do it. Uh, and also, I think that the tonal switch to this low stakes, low key, almost humorous day to day, you know, um, activities is rather dra jarring, coming as it does right off the back of some events that should have left an emotional scar or several emotional scars on Lowell. Now, this doesn't ruin Silent Running for me, but I definitely do think it's a weakness of the film. Um, and I think, you know, it's something you should be forewarned about. The, the, the pacing on this is decidedly wonky, and you should know that before you decide whether or not to give it, its, give it your time. But yeah, that's Silent Running. An interesting but definitely flawed attempt at a more cerebral science fiction film. Next time, uh, the independent 1961 horror film The Devil's Hand. But that will indeed be next time. Until then, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.